What's going on guys? I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it. If you're a returning subscriber, as always, guys, welcome back. And you know I do appreciate the support. Guys, listen. I think it was five or six days ago I did the story of uh, the Vietnamese woman, the 44-year-old Vietnamese woman from Houston, Texas, where I'm from. Her name is Nguyen Trong. And she was... Uh, robbed strong arm robbed by a 17 year old kid named uh joseph harrell joseph harrell got locked up and what joseph harrell did was he strong arm robbed this lady and dropped her on the neck and left her paralyzed from the waist down and he took four thousand dollars from her but the thing that's messed up is he followed her from a bank trans watching her make a bank transaction from 20 miles away and then he decided to pounce on her now, there's been the GoFundMe. I've promoted it on my channel, and I want to give you guys an update real quick. Now, with the GoFundMe, I've contributed out of my own pocket $100 to the GoFundMe, me and another gentleman, and it just hit me. I should have named your name where you put it on my cash app. Brother, I appreciate that, you know, the, the amount of money that you gave, and I put my also put my own money to show helping the community and to assist this lady who is a single mother and dealing with this tragedy where she can't work and having two children. So the stress is high. But guys, listen, the reason why I bring this story up today, this idiot right here, uh, Joseph Harrell, got caught recorded in a, on a jail recording of him confessing to the crime. And what he said about this woman goes right back into what I'm saying of us as a uh, community of black folks. We have, we're uncaring. The younger generation is uncaring, unempathetic, and feel as though they have a right to rob when they don't have something and you do. This guy right here is a piece of crap. And look at this uh, video, guys, and then I'm going to come back and do it the way I do it. No holds barred. And we're going to cook. Check it out. How could you forget the video? A mother violently robbed in Chinatown by a teen who police say followed her more than 20 miles from a bank. She was body slammed and left paralyzed. And breaking tonight, only 13 investigates obtained the jailhouse phone calls that sources close to the investigation confirm the suspect made. Now, he's heard confessing, then complaining that the victim is making money on GoFundMe while he sits in jail. And today, a judge slashed Joseph Harris' bond in half, which is drawing intense criticism from the Houston Police Officers Union. ABC 13's Brooke Taylor joins us in studio with some of those calls tonight, Brooke. Yeah, Eric and Gina, these calls, they are just shocking to say the least. We obtain them from a source close to this investigation, verified by the president of the police officers union. You could hear the man identified as Harrell talking about maybe getting probation, even laughing at the fact that someone would think he'd spend up to 20 years in prison for this assault. One of the phone calls contains this confession. We visited with the victim and her children over the weekend. They did set up a GoFundMe to help pay medical expenses. Take a listen to how the suspect reacts to that. He's laughing for a while about it. The lady probably won't judge and some other hell try to max me out 20 years like the lady. I ain't going for it. But I already hit those two hundred and thirty thousand dollars off go on me. You better run on the life. Like you just ran up two hundred and thirty thousand. Look, they they so they say she ran up two hundred and thirty thousand and she'll be back walking in no less than a year. Well, today, a judge reduced Tarrell's bonds in half in the Chinatown case from $200,000 to $100,000. He's also charged with robbing another woman just over a week later. His bond in that case also reduced. And I reached out to HPD Union President Douglas Griffith tonight. He listened to those recordings you just heard there, and he says if he does make bond, he's worried he is just going to do this again. I'm not concerned for the public. If this kid gets out of jail, 
He is going to victimize more individuals. He does not care about anybody but himself. And, and for the judge to, to lower that bond just baffles my mind. I, don't, I can't wrap my head around that. This kid is a danger to others. He is a danger to our community and needs to be locked up. And court records show his cases are out of the 183rd District Court. That is with Judge Kristen Guinea. We have reached out to the DA's office to find more about this decision to lower his bond, and we will be reaching out to that judge, too. Ladies and gentlemen, that is ignorance at its finest. This dude right here, this young man, is devoid of light, devoid of any type of knowledge of self, and devoid of any type of empathy or compassion for a fellow human being. This is the worst of the worst of us, of people that look like us. This is the reason why, ladies and gentlemen, in case you're dumb, deaf, and blind and not knowledgeable of anything that's going on in the social order of things, this is why us as uh, black folk get a bad stain and why we get our ass beat by cops coming up to us and stuff like that. Anytime we do anything like that, the ripple effect goes on for miles and it affects everybody. He makes all of us look bad. And no activist out there will ever attack this type of situation. This is a hard thing to deal with. No activist will attack this. Now, if he got his ass shot by a store owner after he did that to that woman and her husband came up and shot him like 25 times, it'd be a bunch of people. You didn't have to kill him. He black. It was racism. Now, listen, on this channel, we talk. You know how we talk. We're going to call it out. You can call it right down the middle. This is bullshit. Did you hear the a phone conversation? Took my breath out my body. He mad. Uh, let, let me. Mm. Listen, you heard what he first said? And this is just the mentality of the younger generation, not all, but a lot of the younger generation without, you know, decent parenting and stuff like that or whatever his problem is. This is what you hear in a, in a phone call. Man, that lady talking about she won justice. They talking about locking me up for 20 years. Shit, that bitch better walk on. She better go on calling her bitch and everything. First of all, you're stupid. You're talking on a, a secure line. They record everything in jail. Somebody snitched it right out. Told your business and reported it to the news people. That's the only reason why they got it. Somebody in that phone center or a guard or something passed it to somebody and they got it out to put you on blast. You so stupid. You want to do crime. That's the thing. Everybody want to do crime. Because it's cool or they think, you know, it make them a bad boy in the street, but don't even know prison and jail protocol. You're talking on a, a recorded line. And they tell you over the phone. You wouldn't confess to the crime. Uh, she went justice. I ain't going for it. What you going to do? What you going to do? You couldn't get out with the bond they gave you. And then they slashed the bomb. You're going to get to that in a second. You couldn't get out. Couldn't get out. Yeah, they want justice. So, so. Because she wants justice, and this woman is possibly, she's not out of the woods yet, guys. They said it's a 50% chance. That's if she goes through decent physical therapy, if she can make every appointment. This woman has to learn how to walk again, guys. A basic human right and survival necessity is walking. She has to learn this all over again from something that didn't have to be. Think about that. He mad because she want justice. What I tell you before, when the sayings I say, when somebody do something to you, they have no right in judging how you retaliate against them after you victimize the victim. Perfect example. No accountability. She want justice. So, so everything you did to her, none of that is supposed to be justified, asshole. Think about that. Think about it. You slammed a woman on her head. Not thinking about if she had children or not. Not thinking about if that money was important or was going to something that was important to this woman, vital for her uh, security, safety, and well-being. No, you just saw the money, decided to stalk her, and made your move. You're 17 years old. What you want? What you need four thousand dollars for? 
So you can get on Instagram and flash it. So you can what? Buy weed, sneakers, gear. Front like you getting it. Dumb shit. Anybody can make money, but people rarely know what to do with it. And that's why everybody runs the rat race. That's neither here nor there. Did you hear the second part of the conversation? And this part tore me up. She getting 230000 off the GoFundMe. I'm in jail. Man, she, she better roll up, walk on with her life. Ain't that some shit? The reason why she got the 230000 on uh GoFundMe is because of the dumb shit you did. So you just sitting around doing nigga shit made her hood rich with 230 something thousand. I contributed myself and will possibly contribute more. We're stupid people. Sometimes we are silly fucking people. And this is why the world don't respect us because nobody calls this out. People just see it and say, oh, that's a shame. But nobody calls it out. So-called community leaders. They trying to, they have his bail on this case and another case. Cause a lot of y'all don't know. What was it? 12 days after he did this to this lady before he got caught, he ran up on another lady. I think she was Asian too, put a gun in her face and robbed her. Did you see how nonchalantly he said, Oh, we were snatching purses. That's crackhead shit. Crackhead shit. Then when he robbed her, he didn't know what the hell he was doing. He walked up on and started hugging her. You're an idiot. You don't even know how strong on robbery. It's like everybody want to do stuff, and then when they get caught, all of a sudden people are supposed to feel sorry for them. What the fuck is wrong with us as a people? What's wrong with us? And I, guys, I swear to God, I wish I could fix, fix this with us. Because this is not who we are. This is not who we are. We are beautiful people. We are friendly people. We are driven people. But this kind of stuff right there, it, it, that, that, that's, that, that's some stupid tactics. That's some stupid tactics. He doing that because he want to do that. It takes a lot to physically go up and strong arm somebody. He saw that woman as weak. He looked at her femininity and attacked it. Oh, I can beat her. If that was a man, he would have never did that. I know he would have never did it. If it was, if it was a black woman, I know he would have never did that. Because black women are strong. Y'all know that. They strong. She would have handled him. There ain't no black woman going to let you grab him like that anyway. So he know just what he was doing. You stalked that woman for 20 miles. Looking for the right time. Then you robbed there in Chinatown. Over there off Bel Air. Because you know ain't no black people over there. Or nobody to stop you. And you went over there and, and did that. And man, I wish every Asian would have came out and Kung Fu kicked the shit out of his ass. You know what I mean? Some fist of the white, white lotus shit. Just knocked him the fuck out. And they would have been deserving. But it would have been somebody saying it's racist. Oh, it's racist. They jumped on him. Somebody only got the last part of it and put it on TikTok and put it on something where he was getting stomped the hell out. And it would have been, oh, racist Asians attacking a black man. No cover story. We fall for it all the damn time. Guys, listen, listen, listen. This is bull. They cut his bail in half on this case and the robbery case that happened 12 days later. If that don't tell you some bullshit in the justice system, it's like they be wanting animals like this to come back out. You know, because think about it. You lock him up, give him a bail. See, he ain't got nobody to get him out. Lower the bail a little bit. Boom. Get the bail money. That's one part you cash in. Release him back out in the street. You heard what the lawyer or the judge said at the end? This guy right here going to come back out. He ain't learned nothing. There are people out there that are predator. And there are people that, that, that look at people as prey. This right here is a predator. It's no, it's no, uh, you know, it's always people, oh, he can be rehabilitated. You can't. At that young age, he made a conscious decision to do that. And you hear what he said? See how nonchalant he said on the phone call? We was out here snatching purses. I saw the lady dropped on the head and she got paralyzed. Like it was nothing. They said, oh, would she be able to walk in like a year? Like, she don't need that money. Man, I swear to God, I wish that was my mother or somebody in my family. I wish it was. Because I know he can't get out on that bond. I'd have snuck and paid the bond. And been waiting right downtown. As soon as he came out of Harris County Jail. 
with a van. He wouldn't have known nothing. Because, you know, you get out and then you got to stand around and wait for somebody to call you. I'd have been like, I'd have had a, a chicken ass or something. Joseph? Oh, who that? He'd have came to the van. You would have never seen him again. He'd be sitting on the side of the railroad track stinking. This kind of stuff right here needs to stop. And we as a community need to come together and call this type of behavior out. And that's the thing. Nobody wants to say nothing because we got this quote unquote black culture that's killing us. We are regressing at an alarming rate. Every generation is worse than the next. When is it going to stop? It won't stop unless we stop it. But we need the help of the younger generation that want to make change in themselves. In this channel, I ask you to help me help you to help them. Because some of them, like this asshole here, can't be helped. Long time ago, used to be a, a slogan. Every brother ain't a brother by public enemy. That's proof of it right there. For us to clean house, a lot of us got to go, including this type of mentality. Because you can't reform them. They always want to take over. There's always skeeviness amongst us. This is why the rest of the world laughs at us when we sit up here and say somebody did us wrong and injustice. We have no credibility because we allow this to walk among us. I'm Stock Market Steve. Listen, the live stream will be tonight. You're on a lighter note, uh, Memphis meet and greet is tomorrow, March 25th. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll put the uh, directions of where the place is going to be at the bottom. You guys know I love you. I wish I could change this. Listen, help me make a difference in this world, man. Leave me a comment, thumbs up the video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. You guys take care. Thanks for watching.